want to read to you the great law of peace of the Andino Sony Iroquois Confederacy. In other words, for short, Iroquois Confederacy. The great law of peace. Simply put, the great law of peace is the founding constitution of the Odenosone Confederacy and is the underlying basis for Odesoni society. Originally, it online the path to harmony and unity among the warring nations and set out a proper form of government which allowed for the ideas of peace, power, and righteousness. Throughout its verses, it explains the function of the Great Council and outli outlines a plan for nations to resolve disputes and uphold the peace. It outlines all processes which may face the Odenosoni as explained by the, by the peacemaker. Leadership within the system is from the ground up, making the leaders truly accountable to their people. It outlines the responsibilities to, of all chiefs, as well as the method of impeachment in the event that a chief does not perform his duties to the satisfaction of his people. Within the text, it also highlights many of the symbols of the Odenosoni, including the Great Tree of Peace. As a symbol of peace, all the chiefs stand round in a circle, arms linked, to support it and prevent it from falling over. Atop the tree sits an eagle to see for and wide and warn of danger. Because Odenosoni history is an oral history, there have been many versions of the great law written. It is shared from generation to generation through oral tradition using a series of wampum belts held by the Confederacy to help to share the story. No, no one version of the great law is preferred over another as all the same themes still exist to emphasize its main principles. Outline is the great law, also known as the Gyanasha Gowa or the great building law, sorry, the great binding law are many of the teachings provided by the peacemaker within the text are three main three main principles which stand out to govern the rest peace power and righteousness each principle depends on the other to support the framework of the constitution the peace element signifies one's own peace and being of a good mind and the ability to use our minds to negotiate rather than going to war. In order to have peace, one must have balance in their life within, uh, with health of mind and body. This peace allows one of the good mind needed for the next principle, power. Again, power does not necessarily mean having power over another. Among the Odinosoni, power f comes from unity, for there is strength in numbers. Living a family-based existence with a unity at its core, the power comes from the unity of each nation into a mind one is able to use reason in their decisions and respect this power. The Odenosoni believe that the Creator has for us all a life path and a responsibility. 
it is by achieving these goals outlined for us that we gain we gain the final principle of righteousness righteousness is found through living a pow- a proper life and following the will of the creator as set out in the original instructions the main idea is that peace is the overall will of the creator and using the tools of peace power and righteousness it can be attained peacemaker born of a huron virgin the peacemaker a man whose name is never spoken other than under special circumstances as a mark of respect was the main figure of the confederation story labeled the peacemaker and only called such now by odessoni people by the odessoni people his story be really began when he left the Huron people prophesizing that a baby would be born that would be indirectly responsible for the fall of the nation his grandmother decided to destroy the child three times she tried to drown him but each morning Yupong waking up she would find him nested safely in his mother's arms realizing they could not defeat the prophecy they raised him as best they could growing up he was an outsider an outsider because he talked only of peace friendship and unity he also caused resentment and jealousy among his people because he offered advice on how to live and govern themselves finally he told his mother and grandmother that it was time for him to embark on his journey and crafted a canoe out of a white stone and crossed Lake Ontario. He first upon he first upon upon a party of hunters who doubled his abilities. After proving to them his powers, he shared with them the word of peace and encouraged them to spread the message among their people, leaving them the traveler further and upon upon the house of a woman along the hunting path she provided him with food and accepted the message he shared because of her accep- acceptance the peacemaker declared that when the nations were united it would be the woman who would possess the titles of chieftainship and import them on the men he then entered mohawk territory and set up camp at the edge Alerted of his presence, the leaders of the Mohawks approached him to find his intent. When approached, he proclaimed himself to be sent by the Creator to establish a great peace. The five nations, Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayunga, and Seneca, had long been in a circle of hate and war, constantly battling each other. The peacemaker shared with them a plan to unite the nations and bring about peace. Adopted into the Mohawk nation, it is among them that he met Ayongwata, meaning he gets up early, commonly known as Iyawata. While mourning the loss of his daughters, Ayongwata stumbled upon the Mohawk territory brought to the peacemaker Ayonwata was consoled of his loss and his sorrow was removed to allow his mind the capacity sorry the capability of accepting the message of peace Ayonwata joined him in his quest and aided him in uniting the five nations Ayonwata spoke for him as the speak at the peacemaker and a speech impediment traveling from nation to nation Ayonwala and the peacemaker shared their message and one by one each decided to join except the Onondaga finally after healing the wind of Toda Arrow, a powerful shaman, 
the peacemaker broke down the resistance of the Onondaga nation and succeeded in uniting the five nations. The peacemaker placed antlers on each of the leaders' heads to signify their authority within the confederacy and henceforth making them chiefs and taught them the great law. This is written, of course, by the Ondenosaunee Iroquois Confederacy. I was just reading and I will put the link in the video description. May the Creator bless you.